all right everyone how's everybody doing today and today in this video we're getting ready to do my full camera review for the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active so y'all know how we do in the full camera reviews hashtag bars we take y'all through the full software camera interface we go over all the functions and features of the cameras and we also go over how you can launch into the cameras okay then after that we go ahead and we attach on all the photo samples that we've taken and then we go ahead and we attach on the all the video samples that we've taken now these camera reviews that I do are generally really really long so this whole video will be time stamped for your convenience so as always feel free to jump around to different parts of the video that you want to check out by hitting up the timestamps available down below in the video description. That being said, you can see the current chapter that you're on in the video by just hovering your finger over the scrubber. It will tell you the current chapter that you're on in the video and you could jump around chapters by hitting up the timestamps in the video description. All right. Let's jump into the video now and let's try to get this done quick, fast, and in a hurry. So starting off here, the first thing I want to talk about with everyone is how you can launch into the cameras on your Samsung Galaxy device. All right? And please feel free to check out the demonstrations that you will see up on your screen in post. All right? Now, way number one is by quickly pressing the power button, you can launch into the main camera interface on your device from any screen, okay? So as long as your your device is powered on, if you double press the power button, it will take you directly into the main camera interface, okay? That's way number one. Check out the demonstration up on the screen. Good. Way number two is from the lock screen on your device. All you have to do is swipe up on the camera icon and once again, that will take you into the main camera interface page on your Samsung Galaxy device. All right? Now, last but certainly not least, all you have to do for the last way to launch into the cameras is find the camera icon anywhere on your home screens and just tap on it and that will take you also into the main camera interface. All right? So now let's walk through the main camera interface. Let's walk through all the settings, functions, and features, and let's try to do it quick, fast, and in a hurry. Now we're gonna cover this from top to bottom, left to right. So starting off in the upper left-hand corner, y'all can see we do have a Bixby Vision button. That's basically Samsung's version of their Google Assistant, which you also have access to from the camera. So if I hit allow, okay, and we hit allow again, okay, it will check for the updates. And then once you update it, I'm not going to update mine, it will give you access similar to what the Google Vision does. Let me make sure my screen recorder didn't stop. Okay, good. Okay, so it's basically. Uh, Samsung's version of their voice assistant also tying it into the cameras. Just how Google does with their Google Assistant and their Google Lens, Samsung has their own implementation of that. That's basically what the Bixby Vision is. So it scans text, it does translations, it scans products and you get uh, relevant purchasing information as well. Pretty much everything that the Google Lens does the Bixby Vision does. And it does it in some cases with a little bit more polish. In particularly when we talk about the translations. Now, right next to that we have our stickers. And the stickers are pretty much self-explanatory. So if you're taking selfies, you want to add little fun stickers on top of your picture. That's what these do. I'm not a sticker man, so we just leave that turned off. Then, right below that, we have the gear icon. Okay, we're going to go over that last. That's a shortcut into the sub settings to where you can change some more settings about your cameras. Also, that's where you can verify different things about the cameras as well. Then, right next to that, we have our flash controls. So, pretty much on, off, auto. And it disappears after about two seconds. But it also disappears 
once you select it, okay? Now, I typically shoot with the flash turned off, but you mess around with it and you do what works best for you. Right next to that, we have our flash controls, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. And again, it disappears after about two seconds or once you select an option, okay? Again, now this timer, it would be good to have it in video with the timer is only available in photo mode. All right? Now, directly next to the timer controls, we have our aspect ratios. So four by three, 16 by nine, one by one square, and 18 by five by nine, okay? Full frame. Now, Everything that I recorded and shot was done in the 4x3 aspect ratio, okay? Just so everyone knows. And with the cameras in full auto mode, all right? Now, right next to that, we have access to our filters. So we got a large variety of different filters on here as well. I'm not a big filter man. And then you could download more by hitting that arrow on the end. It would take you to the Galaxy Store where you could download more filters. But as I said, I'm not a filter man, so I just leave it on original and then we turn it off. Okay? Then directly below those shortcuts is our main composition window. And directly below that are the shortcuts to our modes. Now you could tap on the different modes to get to them or you just have to swipe left or right to switch between the different modes, okay? Now, also, if you swipe up and down, that will switch you between the front and the rear facing camera, okay? So you can swipe up, switch, swipe up again, switch, or you can swipe down, switch, swipe down again, switch, it's completely up to you, all right? So swiping left and right will switch you between the modes, Swiping up and down will switch you between the cameras. All right, so let's go through these modes quick, fast, and in a hurry here. So we got our main photo mode, then we got video mode, then we got pro mode, and then we got selective focus mode or Samsung's version of portrait mode, okay? Now on the newer Galaxy devices, they call it selective focus or they call it selective focus video or not select the focus, live focus or live focus video. That's what they call it on the newer Galaxy devices. But on the older ones, it was called select the focus, but it's basically just Samsung's version of portrait mode, okay? Now, if you jump into the settings here and we go down to modes, okay? Just so I can show you, you can see all the camera modes that your S8 Active can do and you can rearrange them by pressing and holding and rearranging the modes as you see fit. And you can also uncheck different modes and they'll disappear from your main camera interface here. So you can see I added food mode, okay? So now food mode is selected, but if I jump back into the settings and we go back down to camera modes and we go into mode edit and I deselect food mode, it will disappear from the main camera interface here. So food mode is now gone. All right, so you play around with the modes for yourself and you pretty much uh, configure the camera layout exactly how you want it to be, okay? I've already set the camera layout exactly how I want it to be. So photos is first, then videos, then pro mode, then portrait mode or selective focus mode, okay? Okay. And as I've said, the timer is only available in photo mode, okay? So as you can see, there's no timer in video mode, but we do have access to our filters. We have access to our ratios. We have access to our flash, stickers, so on and so forth, okay? And in pro mode, you can control just about everything, all right? So focus, uh, shutter speed, white balance, exposure, everything. And they do have the little focus dots up on the screen so you could tell exactly when something is in focus. So we got a full dedicated pro mode right here. Now we don't have a pro mode for video, okay? 
Sadly, with updates, Samsung took that away. If you check out one of my older Galaxy camera reviews of the S7 or the S6, they pretty much had a pro mode for video and they had a dual capture mode. With newer updates, they've taken those modes away and then they've renamed them as something else. So the new version of the dual capture mode is called Director's View. All right, and then we have the pro mode video inside of the mode that's called Director's View, and that also gives you the ability to take dual captures with your front and your rear facing camera, whether it be photos or videos. And then selective focus is just like portrait mode, and it tells you the, optim the, optimal, the optimal range to have something on the screen to get that depth of field effect, okay? And it tells you that every time you go into it, see? So you get that little uh, note on the bottom that tells you the optimal range for the portrait mode or blurred effect, okay? And then after you take your photo in portrait mode or select the focus mode, you can go back in and adjust that background blur. So you could add more, you could add less, you can get rid of the effect altogether. It's up to you, all right? So that goes over all the modes that I use. And that goes over the main camera interface here. And let's go further on. So just below the uh, modes, we have the shutter button. Now the shutter button turns into a video button depending on the mode that you're in, all right? Right next to that on the left-hand side, we have a quick shortcut to our gallery. And right next to that on the right-hand side, we got a quick shortcut to take us to the front-facing camera. All right, good stuff, good stuff indeed. And essentially, everything that you can do with the rear cameras, you can do with the front cameras, except for pro mode. There's no pro mode photos with the front facing eight megapixel camera, okay? And again, you can get to that front camera by swiping up or down, or you can click the shortcut button right here. It's completely up to you. All right. Now let's dive into the sub settings and verify some things about these cameras. Now, right up at the top in the camera settings, we got the photo uh, settings here. So you can see for the rear facing primary camera, it is indeed a 12 megapixel camera in the four by three aspect ratio. Now, if you change the ratio, you get different resolutions, okay? So you can see to take advantage of all 12 megapixels, you need to use the four by three aspect ratio. If you use the 16 by nine aspect ratio, then you're stuck shooting in either 9.1 megapixels or 3.7 megapixels, all right? And if you do the full 18 by nine, it's 7.8 megapixels. And if you do the one by one square, it's 9.1 megapixels or 4.7 4 megapixels, okay? Now, all the photos um, were done in the 4x3 aspect ratio, taking full advantage of all 12 megapixels, okay? And all the videos were done in the 4x3 aspect ratio, except for the 1080p uh, 30fps video, okay? That was done in the 18x5x9, uh, by by the full frame, okay? With the 1080p 60 was done in four by three, so on and so forth. The uh, 2K footage was done in four by three as well, okay? So that goes over all the photo settings for the rear facing camera. And then we got, and then we got the same thing for the front facing camera. So you can see the front facing camera is indeed an eight megapixel sensor in the four by three aspect ratio. And then the same rules apply. If you do 16 by nine, that's six megapixels. If you do 18 by five by nine, that's 5.2 megapixels. And if you do the one by one square, that's six megapixels, all right? Then we got the uh, live photo mode or motion photo mode. So it takes a little bit of a short clip of audio before the, before the photo and a little bit of a short clip of audio after the photo to give you that nice motion effect. Then we got what happens when you hold down the shutter button. So you could do burst photos 
or you can do a GIF creator. Now, I don't like either one of those, so I just have my shutter button set up to take photos. All right, then we got the save options. So if you're taking selfies, you can save it to where it flips the selfie before you see it, or you could turn on the pro raw effects, okay? So you get a raw version of the photo, okay? With that turned off, you're getting a JPEG GIF version of the photo. With that turned on, you're getting the JPEG GIF and the raw version of the photo. Now, raw photos are good if you want to do editing or if you're doing a lot of your photos in pro mode, okay? Now, that does it for the camera settings for photos. Now, let's get into the video settings here. Now, with the rear-facing camera, which is 12 megapixels, you can see we can shoot all the way up to 4K at 30 FPS. We could do 1080p 60, we could do 1080p 30, and we could do 720p 30 FPS. Now, if you shoot in 4K, you're gonna lose the object tracking autofocus. You're gonna use the H you're gonna lose the HDR controls, right? Same thing for 2K, you're gonna lose the Object tracking autofocus, you're gonna lose the stability, and you're gonna use you're gonna lose the HDR controls. Now, in 1080p 60, you will lose focus altogether. So it then turns off focus altogether and it's kind of like a fixed focus camera at 1080p 60. Then we lose HDR controls and we lose the object tracking autofocus. Okay? So if you shoot in 1080p 60, it's completely Lock focus and lock frame. All right. Now, just for reference, my video editor can only upload or um, render in 2K at 30 FPS. So that is the highest resolution that I shot these videos at 2K at 30 FPS. All right. Good stuff there. So, although these cameras can record in up to true 4K. I shot in 2K because that's all my editor supports in terms of uploads and rendering. All right? Good stuff there. Good stuff indeed. And you can see as you change the resolutions, you change the different sizes. So 18 by 9 square is a little bit more than 1080p. A 1 by 1 square is a little bit less or a little bit more than 1080p, but not quite uh, 1080p+. plus. And then the 4x3 is kind of the uh, standard definition. Okay? And that's the video for the rear. And then you can see we have something similar for the video for the front. Now the front video only goes up to 2K. So you could do 2K 30 FPS. You could do 1080p 30. And you could do 720p 30 FPS. And then the same rules of as the rear apply to the front. Okay, so if you're shooting in 2K, you lose the object tracking autofocus, you lose the HDR support, and you lose the video stabilization. All right, just so you know. And then everything else with the front is the same as the rear in terms of the different ratios and the resolutions. Okay, all right. Now, below that, we got our saving format codex. Okay, so if you check this off, it's going to save your video in the new H.265 format. Okay, if you turn it off, it's going to save it in the older but much more compatible 8.264 codec. Now, why is that important? If you shoot video in H.265, it's more compressed, so it saves, uh, it uses less space, so it takes up less space. But, if you play it back on a device that's not supporting the H.265 codec, you may lose the audio, okay? Whereas H.264 is pretty much a widely supported codec, which is supported on just about everything, so you get your audio and your video, all right? Then we have the video stabilization controls. This, this basically is just telling the cameras whether to turn the EIS electronic image stabilization on by checking it on or turning it off by checking it off okay then we got the HDR controls so you could turn it all on and off and then if we click in 
You got two options for HDR. You got always apply or you got apply as needed. So after you take a photo, after you take a video, the software will scan it and decide if it needs to add in HDR. So boost the colors, bring out the light in the shadows, so on and so forth. Or you could just be like, skip it, apply it all the time. So no matter what you do, it will always boost the colors, boost the shadows. It's up to you. Now, I left this on apply as needed for the videos and the photos. Okay? So that's the HDR controls. So you could turn it off, you could turn it on, and you could decide when the software applies it. Then, directly below that, we got our object tracking autofocus, okay? And that's pretty much self-explanatory. You have an, ob an object on the screen that you wanna keep in focus, turn this on, tap on that object, and as long as the cameras can see it, it will keep that object in focus. Then we have our grid lines here. So we got the three by three square, which is really good for helping you line up your shots and videos, or we got the regular square here which pretty much just adds a square to your viewfinder. That does sometimes make it easier, or you could just turn that off altogether. It's up to you. Now, I've gotten used to shooting with the uh, three by three square, so that's generally what I use, okay? Then, directly below that, and this is important, we have our location tags. What are location tags, you may be asking? Location tags are basically just the location metadata that gets stored every time you snap a photo, okay? So when you have location tags turned on, anytime you're out and about taking a photo, it's storing a little bit of that location information by turning on your GPS and storing that information that it will add back later in your gallery and sort it by locations. Now, that may be a convenient feature, yes? Because then you can always tell, oh, I took this, took this photo here at this time and this is where we were, but, and this is a big but, I always turn this off because anyone with a little bit of technical know-how can get your location metadata based off of the photos or the videos that you post, okay? So if you're gonna post a lot of your photos or videos online, you need to turn off that location metadata, all right? It's kind of a privacy thing for me. I turn this off on all of the smart devices that I have, okay? When I'm ready to use the GPS, I'll turn the GPS on. When I feel like the GPS doesn't need to be tracking my location, I'll turn that bad boy off, okay? And I recommend you do the same thing with the location tags or the location metadata, right? Then we have the selfie auto correction. That one's self-explanatory. We already talked about the camera modes and how you can rearrange them, but there's also an option in here that will remember the last camera mode that you were in. So if there's a camera mode that you use often, check that off and the camera will remember the last mode that you were in and bring you back to that mode when you open the camera again, okay? I use some of the same modes often, so I leave this on, okay? Then quick launch is that quick double press of the power button to launch you into the cameras from any screen. Then this next one is pretty much self-explanatory. We got quick preview of the photos directly after you take them. We got a toggle for the shutter sound, and then we got a factory reset for the camera software to take you back to the original uh, factory settings for the cameras. And then we got about cameras, which would tell you the current software that the camera is on. Now for the S8 Active, it only got as high as software 9.0.0.2.46, but I do believe Samsung's actual camera software is on version 11.002, if I'm not mistaken, okay? And then I skipped one, but we got the location for your photos and videos. And what's neat is 
Whenever you install an SD card and you launch the cameras, as soon as the camera detects that the SD card is installed, it will give you the option to switch to the SD card. Now, the internal storage on the device is always faster, but if you store a lot of your stuff to the internal storage, it will take up a lot of space faster. So I always recommend if you have micro SD card support, you need to get yourself a nice high quality micro SD card and then you need to come in here and check off the option to save the storage to the micro SD card. All right. That way, you know, your photos and videos are stored directly to your micro SD card and it's not taking up valuable necessary internal storage. Okay. All right. So now this has officially went over all of the camera settings in the main camera interface and all of the sub camera settings as well. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and throw on all of the photo samples and then we're going to throw on all the video samples and then I will see y'all at the end of the video to give you my overall final thoughts on the cameras and give you my overall recommendation from a cameras and an overall device perspective. All right. I hope you guys and gals enjoy the rest of the video. I hope y'all found it helpful and I will see you guys on the other side. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Peace. to testing out the cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. So starting out here, we're testing out the front facing, I believe it's an eight megapixel camera, and this is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS. Now what's really neat about the front facing cameras is that they can record all the way up to 2K at 30 FPS. So you have 720p, 30 FPS, you have 1080p, 30 FPS, and then you have 2K, 30 FPS, right? Now with the rear cameras, you can go all the way up to true 4K at 30 FPS, and you can do 1080p slow motion and 720p slow motion at 240 frames per second, all right? But real quick front-facing clip here of the front-facing 8 megapixel camera on the S8 Active. 
So now let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and test out the rear facing primary camera and then let's move on with the testing. So give me one second, I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, y'all, so now we're back in and we're testing out the rear facing primary 12 megapixel camera now. And this is also in 1080p at 30 FPS. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into the usual testing here. Now what's nice about the rear facing cameras is that we do have a combination of OIS. So physical optical image stabilization as well as EIS, okay? So electronic image stabilization. So this footage should be nice and smooth because I do have the EIS turned on and OIS is a physical built-in feature into the cameras, all right? So y'all let me know what y'all think of the stabilization. Y'all let me know what you think of the overall video quality, the audio quality, y'all know how it goes. Now let's jump into the testing. Let's start off with the pans here. So we're gonna pan from here all the way through to right about there and come on back. We're gonna do this three times. And I don't know if I said it, but all of this footage will be recorded with the onboard microphones on the device. So we not we will not be using any external audio when testing out the cameras on the S8 Active. All right, so let's go. That's one, let's come on back. Good, and now number two. Good, and let's come on back. And now number three. And let's come on back. Okay, so that's test number one. Now let's go into an exposure test. So we're gonna line up on the tree here and we're gonna pan down to the ground and when we test the exposure, we want a nice even transition from the lighter areas of the scene to the darker areas of the scene with minimal exposure blowout. Now it's kind of an overcast day today, so who knows how the camera's gonna perform, but let's see what happens. Let's test this three times. So we're lined up on the tree, pan down. Now we're on the ground. Okay, let's go back up to the tree. One, how was that? That didn't look half bad. Going down again. Going back up. Two, how was that? And then last one, down. Up. Three, what do you think? Now, based on what I'm seeing through the viewfinder, that looked pretty good, pretty good indeed. All right, now let's go ahead and get into testing out the focus. Now we have continuous autofocus as well as tap to focus, and we're gonna test out both of them. Continuous autofocus first. So we're gonna use our three focal subjects as we always do. So we're gonna use these bushes off to my left, okay? We're gonna use the tree in the center and we're gonna use this pillar off to my right, okay? Gonna test this two times each, continuous autofocus first. Here we go, bushes to the left, tree in the center, pillar to the right. One, again, bushes to the left, tree in the center, Pillar to the right, two. Now let me readjust my grip. Okay, and now we can do the tap to focus. So once again, we're gonna test all three all three spots twice, and y'all let me know how the focusing speeds are. Here we go. Bushes to the left, tap, locked up, 
And you can see it does a really good job adjusting the exposure once it taps and locks the focus. But the focusing speed there was almost instant, okay? Tree in the center, tap, locked up. Again, almost instant, all right? And then bushes, oh, bushes. Pillar off to my right, tap, locked up. Again, almost instant, really fast overall focusing speeds. Let's test it one more time. Coming back over to the bushes to my left, tap, locked up, okay? Tree in the center, tap, locked up. And pillar off to the right, tap, locked up. Again, almost instant, and it does a really good job with the exposure after you assist it by tapping on where you want it to focus, okay? The autofocus was kind of dark, okay? It's kind of underexposing, whereas once I tap the focus, it exposed for the scene properly now, okay? Let me know what y'all think. Now, you can also go ahead and set the exposure how you want. So if we lock focus on the bushes here, I can underexpose by swiping down on the little slider, so we can underexpose. I can overexpose by swiping up on the little slider. Or I can dial it in exactly where I think the scene should be. So right about here is perfect. Okay. And then if I tap anywhere else on the screen, it will go back to autofocus, auto exposure. All right. So just wanted to show y'all that. And you can also lock the focus and lock the exposure by tapping on where you want to focus and then pressing and holding. Okay, so if we press and hold, and then you'll see on the side, it will say autofocus locked. So you'll get a little AF-L, that means autofocus locked, but you can still go ahead and adjust the exposure, I believe. Nope, nope, my mistake, that does lock the exposure as well. So the focus is locked now, and the exposure is locked now. Okay, so now let's get into the last part of this video here. Let's get into the zoom testing. So let's focus on that house roof, way in the distance. Let's go ahead and lock the focus, lock the exposure. Let me dial it in. So right about there is perfect. Now you have pinch to zoom, so we can zoom all the way in up to eight times, as you can see there. Or you can also, my bad, shaky camera productions, I had an itch. You can also program the volume rockers to zoom you in and out, okay? All right. And what's really neat here, my bad y'all, is that once you start zooming, a little slider comes up and then you can just slide your finger up and down to the zoom point that you want, okay? So we can go all the way up to eight times digital zoom. So let's test the zoom right now. Let's also test the stabilization right now. As we zoom in, you know the image is gonna get more and more shaky or less stable. Let's see how the cameras do. So this is with no zoom. Let's go up to 2.5 times. 2.5 times zoom right here. And that actually looks really, really good. Let's go up to four times. Okay, four times zoom right here. Okay, let's go up to five times. Five times zoom right here. And then let's go ahead and max it out on the roof. So eight times zoom right there. And you can see, at least through the viewfinder, that roof is looking a little pixelated. You can see the image got a little bit bouncy but it's not too super shaky. But let me know what y'all think. Now, if y'all want my recommendation, I would say no more than two times or 2.5 times zoom. So no more than two times right here or 2.5 times zoom right here, okay? If you wanna get to your subject or you need to zoom in after that point, you need to physically move closer to your subject to get that really solid image. I wouldn't recommend maxing out the zoom on the cameras because after a certain point, you're just digitally degrading the image. So let's zoom back out now. 
So once again, we're back to no Zoom. Okay? All right. So y'all let me know what you think. How was this footage? Now let's run inside and do some more testing. Okay? I will be right back. The next test we're going to do is indoors, daytime, low light, okay, with the front and the rear facing cameras. I'll see y'all in a second. We'll be right back. All right, everyone. And now we're testing out the front and rear facing cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active in 1080p, 30fps, indoors, daytime, low light. So right here, I just got some real quick stationary front facing vlog style footage, indoors, daytime, low light with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what y'all think of the overall video quality, the overall audio and the overall stabilization down below. Let me know. All right. Now we're just going to quickly spin the cameras around and do some indoor daytime low light testing with the rear facing primary 12 megapixel camera, I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, y'all. So as promised now, I spun the cameras around and now let's get into testing out the rear facing primary 12 megapixel camera on the S8 Active indoors daytime low light in 1080p, 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So here we go, let me verify for y'all if I pan over. Y'all can see the only light we have coming into the room here today is the light coming in from the window here. You can see if I pan over a little further, it's dark everywhere else. So this is indeed an indoor daytime low light test. All right, now let's pan everything back over. Okay, and now Let's angle everything up into a traditional reviewer style angle. So let's go, let's pan this down, and then let's tighten this up. Okay, there we have it right there. So now y'all can see we got that real nice traditional downward angle there. And what do y'all think? Check out the new wireless keyboard and mouse. What do y'all think of the detail on the text and on the keys? What do y'all think of the overall video quality, the overall audio quality, and the stabilization? Let me know. Let's pick it up. Let me give y'all a little pan through. Man, check that out. Check that out. Yeah, buddy. And man, look how slim this keyboard is, man. Check that out. What do y'all think? How's the sharpness of the text? Let me know down below. All right? Okay. And the keyboard isn't the only slim thing either. Check out how slim this mouse is, man. Check this out. Also rechargeable. Crazy, right? All right, let's do some quick focus testing and then wrap this video up. So bringing in the oldie but the goodie, got the, got, look, we got the Samsung Galaxy S7 active here. Check that out. How's the cameras doing with the focus and the detail? Check out the stipple pattern on the back. How legible is that text? Hmm? Check out the nice shallow depth of field or bokeh blur going on in the background there. Check that out. That looks sweet. And now let's see how fast it goes from transitioning from the phone focus to the keyboard. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Boom. And we're right back on the keyboard, man. Like it's nothing. Let's bring back in the phone and see how quickly it locks back up. Ready? Go. Boom. And we're back on the phone. And again, check out that nice shallow depth of field going on there. All right, good stuff, good stuff indeed. And that's natural depth of field being created by the camera when it locks on focus. We're not in live focus mode or anything like that. That's just natural depth of field that happens when it locks in the focus. So let's test it one more time and then let's wrap the video up. So let's take the phone out 
and see how quickly it locks back up on the keyboard. Ready? Three, two, one, go. And we're back on the keyboard, man. So let me know what y'all think. And, you know, I'm pleasantly surprised, even though I'm not really surprised. This is one of the reasons why I use Samsung devices to record a lot of my video content. They are really, really good regardless of whatever lighting scenario you put them in. So what do y'all think? Okay. How's the detail? How's the focus? Let me know down below. All right. Now, a little bit later on, we're going to retest these cameras in nighttime artificial lighting scenarios. And then we'll move on to some more testing here. All right. I'll be right back with the next set of clips for y'all. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Peace. All right, everyone. And now we are back in. And I got to shoot these next two clips kind of quick. It's late, but I still got things to do. But now we're testing out the front and rear facing cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And this is nighttime artificial lighting. And starting off the testing here, we're testing out the front facing 8 megapixel camera, I want to say. Again, if I've been getting that wrong all video, I'll have the proper annotation below my head. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. So y'all let me know what y'all think of this overall video footage. Y'all let me know what you think of the overall audio as well. And now let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and test out the rear facing primary 12 megapixel camera on the S8 Active. I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone, so now I've just spun the cameras around and now we're using the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. This is being recorded in 1080p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And this is also being recorded at nighttime, artificial lighting. So if I pan over here, y'all can see there is absolutely no light coming in through the window. So the only thing that we have lighting up the scene here this evening is my overhead smart studio light up there. Okay. Just wanted to verify that for everyone. Now let's put it all down and let's angle it up in the traditional reviewer style approach. And let's start the artificial low light testing. So this looks about straight. Now let's angle it down and that looks good and let's tighten it up. Okay. And I am a little bit off. So let's go this way. And there it is. There it is, there you go. Now we are straight on. So as y'all can see, we are straight on or as about as straight on as I can get. And what do y'all think of this footage? So this is nighttime artificial lighting here. And y'all can see, let me hold up the keyboard. How's the cameras doing with the text? How legible is that? How much detail are you getting off of that? How do you think it's doing with the lighting? In all honesty, this is looking more than usable right here. More than usable indeed. And the text is looking really, really good. Really good indeed. All right. Now let's do some focusing tests and get up out of here. So bringing in the S7 Active here. Get a nice tight close up on the text. Okay. How legible would you say that is or lack thereof? Can you read that? How's that looking? Okay, yeah, that's definitely looking legible. It's looking readable. I like the stipple pattern coming off of the back of the device here. Even in this lower light, the S8 Active is doing a great job. 
Look at the nice natural depth of feel happening in the background there. So you can see the keyboard behind me is nice and blurred out. All right, let's check the focusing speed. So let's take the phone out and see how fast it locks back up on the keyboard. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Boom. That was almost instant, y'all. It's pretty good. That was pretty good indeed. Let's bring the phone back in and see how quickly it locks back up on. Ready? Bringing it in. Boom. We're struggling a little bit, and there it is. Again, nice shallow depth of field getting applied there, and that's all natural. That happens when the phone locks focus. Okay, so we don't have a live focus or a bokeh mode here with the S8 active. That's all natural depth of field happening. All right, and one more time, let's check the focus. So taking it out in three, two, one. See how quick it locks back up. Boom. All right. Really fast stuff. Really fast stuff indeed. Okay. So real quick, low light testing here with the primary and the front facing cameras on the S8 Active. Again, let me know what y'all think. How did the front facing cameras perform? How did the rear facing primary cameras perform? How was the audio? How was the stabilization? Let me know. Now, moving on here for the 1080p 60 testing, 1080p 60 can only be done with the primary camera. So the primary 12 megapixel rear facing camera is the one that records in 1080p 60. So the next set of tests whether it be block, vlog style or regular like this, it's going to be done with the primary 12 megapixel camera. And then when we close out the video, the front facing camera can record in up to 2K at 30 FPS. So the closing out clip will be with the front and the rear facing cameras yet again. All right. I'll see you guys and gals on the next set of tests. I'll be right back. Peace. All right. How's everybody doing today? Back again with another video for everyone. And today we're testing out the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. This video is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And as y'all can see, we're out here in shooting space number two here today. So we're out here by the pool and we're just gonna get into some real quick camera testing here. And y'all let me know what you think of the overall video quality the overall stabilization, the overall microphone performance. Let me know all that good stuff down below. All right, so real quick vlog style test here. Now let me spin the camera around and we're gonna give y'all a regular traditional camera test. All right, I'll see y'all in a second. I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so now we're back in and we're gonna get into this traditional camera test with the rear facing cameras on the S8 Active in 1080p at 60 FPS. Now, before we get started, I wanna let y'all know some prerequisites here. When you record in 1080p at 60 FPS, you lose um, the stabilization, you lose the object tracking autofocus, and you lose uh, one other thing. Oh, you lose the HDR too as well. And you get a limit recording restriction of up to 10 minutes, all right? So you get all of those restrictions when you record in 1080p at 60 FPS. So let's jump into the test. Once again, there's no external audio, and let's try to get this quick, let's try and get this done quick, fast, and in a hurry, because we only got 10 minutes. So starting off here, let's do our traditional pans. We're gonna start from here, and we're gonna go all the way through to right about there and come on back. Y'all gonna have to forgive the car stuff and the uh, lawn trimming stuff. So we're gonna come back now and we're gonna do that twice. So this is number one. Okay, here we go with number two. Okay. Boom, now let's come back to the center. Boom, 
Now let's test the exposure. Now we're going to pan up and down. And when we test the exposure, we want that nice smooth transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas with minimal exposure blowout. Let's see how it does. Here we go. We're going to do this three times. Ready? Down. Up. One. How is that? Down. Up. Two. How is that? Last one. Down. Up. Three. How is that? Now it looked pretty good to me, but leave your thoughts down below. Now let's get into a focusing test. So we're going to pick three focal subjects here. We're going to use the mango tree in the back over there. I like this pool chair right here across the way. And we're going to use this folding chair off to the far left here. Okay. Now the S8 Active has tap to focus as well as continuous autofocus. All right. And again, when you shoot in 1080p at 60 FPS, you lose the object tracking autofocus as well. So we're going to test each of these two times. We're going to start off testing the continuous autofocus first, and then we're going to switch to the tap to focus. So here we go. Let's get into this. So coming over to the mango tree. Yeah, that looks like it's in focus. Coming over to the folding chair. That also looks like it's in focus. Then finishing up with the big pool chair. Boom. One. Going again. Mango tree. Folding chair, big pool chair, two, all right, let me adjust my grip here, and we'll do the same thing with the tap to focus, here we go, folding chair, tap, locked up, really good stuff there, really good stuff indeed, big pool chair, tap, locked up, mango tree, tap, Locked up. And you can see it also gives you the focus lock, but it does a quick adjustment to the exposure as well. So really good stuff. Really good stuff indeed. Let's do it one more time. Folding chair. Tap. Locked up. Almost instant. Big pool chair. Tap. Locked up. Again, almost instant. And mango tree. Tap. Locked up. Now that one took a little bit of an extra second there but still really, really quick focus. So overall focus with the S8 Active, in my opinion, is really good, really good indeed. All right, last but certainly not least, let's get into that young zoom test, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to focus up on the roof, on that house across the way, and we're gonna get to zooming in. So this whole video so far has been done with no zoom. Now let's go into 2.5 times, 2.5 times zoom right there. What do you think? Okay, how's destabilization? How's the detail retention? Let me know down below. So 2.5 times zoom. Let's go up to four times zoom now. Four times zoom right here. What do you think? What do you think? Okay, let's keep going now. Let's go up to six times zoom. Six times zoom right here. Now, I don't know if you could tell, but the image has gotten a little bit pixelated and it's a little bit washed out. And you can see we lose a little bit of stabilization. You see how bouncy it got and how juggly it got. And I'm trying to keep super still. All right, six times zoom. Let's go up max. Eight times zoom right here. Maximum zoom. Eight times. Okay? Y'all see the image? You see how it degraded? You see how much more shakier it's gotten? You see how much more washed out it is? Eight times zoom. This is why I would never recommend you use the maximum zoom range for your camera. I always recommend anywhere between two. So right here. And 2.5. Right there. Okay? So again... 2 right here or 2.5 right there okay if you need to get closer to your subject 
You need to physically move closer at that point. All right? So this has been a real quick outdoors test with the rear-facing 12-megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. And again, this is in 1080p at 60 FPS. Now let's go ahead and run inside and we're gonna do some more testing indoor daytime low light in 1080p at 60 FPS. So I'll be right back with another set of tests for y'all. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, y'all. So now we're testing out the front, front, the primary uh, 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. And this is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And this is a real quick vlog style stationary clip here. All right, so let me know what y'all think, okay? How's the detail retention? How's the stabilization? How is the camera doing with this lower light scenario? Again, this is indoors, daytime, low light with the primary 12 megapixel camera on the S8 Active and this is in 1080p at 60 FPS. All right, let me know what y'all think. Now let's spin the camera around and let me give y'all a traditional indoor daytime low light test in 1080p, 60 FPS. I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So now I've just spun the camera around and I'm gonna give y'all a regular camera test with the primary 12 megapixel camera on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. Once again, this is in 1080p at 60 FPS and this is an indoor daytime low light test. All right, so let's do some quick verifications and let's jump straight into the testing. And we gotta do this quick because as I said, when you record in 1080p at 60 FPS on your S8 Active, you get a 10 minute recording limit. All right, so let's go. So panning over here, y'all can see that the only light source we have here today is the light coming in through the window here, okay? So you can see all the other light is turned off and you can see when I focus on the window, anywhere but the window actually gets really, really dark, okay? So this is indeed an indoor daytime low light test. Just wanted to do that for verifications. Now, let's pan back over, let's straighten everything up, and let me angle it up in the traditional reviewer style angle so we can do some testing. So panning back over, okay, that looks good, let's straighten it up. This looks good, and now let's pan it down. Boom, actually that's too far down, let me back up a little bit. Bam, that's perfect baby. All right, so now y'all can see, this is what the primary cameras on the S8 Active look like indoors, daytime, low light, and once again, this is a 1080p, 60 FPS clip. So how do you feel the main camera is doing? How's the detail on the keyboard? How's the sharpness of the text on the keyboard? How you feel the camera is doing with the lighting? All right, let me hold it up. What y'all think? How sharp is that text? Or how grainy is that text? Let me pan it through. Okay, what do y'all think? What do y'all think? Okay, now, Let's do some quick focus testing and we'll wrap this up. Now, giving y'all my thoughts, that actually, it looks a touch grainy, but it's actually very usable. But overall, I would have to say the lighting on this looks really good. Like, if I had to shoot like this on the regular, I would be okay shooting like this. All right, now let's do some focus testing. So, got the trusty Dusty. S7 active right here. Let's lock up on the focus on the text. Okay, how legible is that text? Okay, and you can see the camera is definitely struggling in this lower light scenario. Let me try and help it out. All right, it got a little better, but it's still struggling to get the focus on that text. So yeah, you can definitely see, and this is where the older cameras on older devices struggle is when you take them into lower light. So you can see it is definitely having a tough time focusing on the text on the back of this device 
in the lower light scenario there. So when we tilt it, it gets a little bit better because we're getting a little bit more light reflected off the device, but it's definitely, definitely struggling. Okay? So no need to continue on with the rest of the focus link test because it's, it really can't lock focus. All right? This is where more light would come in handy. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about here. So if I turn on my studio light here, and you're going to notice a very big different difference the minute we turn on some extra light. Okay, let me fire this up. Boom. And now we got some extra light here. And check out how, how much better it focuses now. Once it catches it, and you can see it's still kind of having a tough time focusing. Yeah. So the older Galaxy devices, they did have a little bit of a focusing issue. And you can see even with good lighting now, it's still struggling to lock that focus. All right. Let me see if I help it out if we use the tap to focus, if it will get better. All right. So let's use that tap to focus now. All right, a little better, but still having a tough time with that text. All right, so definitely, definitely, if you're using this camera and you're recording video, you want to make sure you have really good lighting, okay? Because it is going to struggle if you need some really good focus. It's going to struggle a little bit. And that's actually one of the reasons why I still use this device to record a lot of video. I feel like the focus on the S7 is a lot better than the focus on the S8. And I was pleasantly surprised because this is a lot older device, okay? You would think, or you know, customs would dictate, or common sense would dictate, that the newer device would be the better device. Well, in this instance, that is not the case. The focusing on the S7 is actually a lot better, in my opinion, than the focusing on the S8, all right? So, real quick, indoors, daytime, low light test. And y'all can see what happens when you put your devices into situations where the lighting is not the best. Y'all see what happens. They tend to struggle. Alright? So, we're going to redo this test again a little bit later on in nighttime artificial lighting. And we'll see how the cameras do on the S8 Active. Okay? So I hope y'all enjoyed this test. I hope y'all found it helpful. And I will see y'all in the next clip. I'll be right back. All right, y'all. And now we are back in testing out the primary cameras on the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. So this is a vlog style test of the primary 12 megapixel camera on the S8 Active. And this is nighttime artificial lighting shooting scenario here. And this is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. Okay? So let me know what y'all think of this real quick clip down below. All right? Now let's spin the cameras around and give y'all a traditional artificial lighting low light test with the primary 12 megapixel camera. All right, so give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, everyone. So as promised, I spun the cameras around and let's do this test as quick as we can because we only got a 10 minute recording limit. So now we're testing out the primary 12 megapixel camera on the S8 Active in nighttime artificial lighting settings here. And this also is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. All right, so let me pan over and show y'all. So y'all can see there is indeed absolutely no light coming in through the window here. So y'all can see it's pitch black outside. So the only thing we have lighting up the scene here this evening is my overhead artificial smart studio light here. Okay, <clears throat> now let's angle back over. And let's angle everything up in the traditional reviewer style approach. And then we're going to get into some very quick testing here. Because if, if the test that we're going to do now is anything similar to what happened earlier, this one should be really quick. 
And I think it's because um, the object tracking and continuous autofocus is turned off when you're not shooting in 1080p or under. So 1080p 60 and up, it kind of locks the focus. So I think if, it, if it's going to happen like it happened earlier, it should be a very quick test. So let's angle everything up. So angle this down. All right. Just like that. And then let's tighten this up. Oops, too far down. Loosen that back up. There we go. That's it right there. Okay, good stuff. Make sure that's nice and straight. That looks good. All right, good. Let's pull this out now. Okay, and let's back up a little bit. Actually, we can angle down a little bit further because this is straight on right here. So we gotta actually angle down a little bit further. Right there, that's it. Tighten this back up. Good stuff. And let's level it out a little bit. Perfect. Perfect. So now you guys and gals can see, this is what these cameras look like in the traditional reviewer style angle here. Let me know what y'all think. How's the detail? How's the sharpness of the text on the keyboard? And more importantly, Let's see how the focus is. So let me hold up the keyboard, give y'all an example of the text. Okay, how sharp is that? How legible is that? Okay, let me know. That actually doesn't look half bad from right here. Let's pan through. Yeah, that doesn't look half bad from right here. All right, okay. Now let's do our focusing testing and wrap this up. Now, just so everyone knows, I keep I, ugh, just so everyone knows, I clean off the camera lenses before every test. Okay? I keep me a large variety of microfiber cleaning cloths on deck. I have a bunch of small ones. I have a bunch of big ones. Y'all have seen it in multiple videos. I clean off the camera lenses before every video and before every camera test. Okay, so I don't know what happened earlier. It might have been a fluke. I actually retested it a couple times, came out the same way. So I'm not entirely sure what happened earlier, but let's see if the same thing happens here this evening. All right, so bringing in the S7 Active here. See if we can line up on that text. And yep, it's doing the same thing. Same thing as earlier. So it's really having a hard time. Locking up focus on that text there and locking up focus on the device in general. So you really need really good lighting for these cameras to do some good work. All right, let's see if I can assist it with the tap to focus. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm hitting the sensor so it's going off in the viewfinder. All right, so let's see if we can assist it with the tap to focus. And see what happens. Nope. Still the same. That looks out of focus to me. I'm not sure what's going on now here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I think it has something to do with the fact that I'm recording in 1080p60. Because it did say in the settings that when you shoot with 1080p60, you lose object tracking autofocus and you you lose some HDR control. So I think it has more to do with the fact that I'm shooting in 1080p60 than anything else. I think when you shoot in 1080p60 with the S8 Active, it converts to a fixed focus uh, sensor. All right, I wonder if the 4K is gonna be the same way. We'll find out tomorrow when we finish up and do the 4K testing on the rear and the 2K testing on the front. But y'all can see the same thing happened here in nighttime artificial lighting that happened earlier in indoor daytime low light. So it's definitely having a struggling issue focusing up on that text. Okay? 
So not the best focus here. Not the best focus at all. And you can see it's even having a bigger issue locking up focus back on the keyboard again. Alright. There it is. Finally caught it. But it still looks slightly out of focus to me. Alright, let's try it one more time before we wrap this up. So bring it in the device. Yeah, that's not locking focus at all. And taking out the device. Yeah. So it's definitely struggling in these lower light scenarios, but I think it has more to do with the fact of the resolution that I'm shooting at and the fact that this higher resolution disables some much needed features. Because I wasn't having this issue when I shot in 1080p, and when I shoot in 720p on the regular, I don't have this issue. Alright, it is what it is. Alright y'all, so quick nighttime artificial lighting low light test. Let me know what y'all think. Now... A little bit later on tomorrow, we're going to wrap up the testing on the S8 Active. We're going to give y'all a 2K front-facing camera test, because that's the maximum resolution for the front-facing camera. And we're going to have we're going to give you a 4K rear-facing camera test and bring this camera video to a close. All right, everyone. And now we are back in. And here we are doing the final set of tests for the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active. All right, so we're out here in the big yard today and we're gonna get into the final set of rear-facing and front-facing camera clips. So this video right here is with the rear-facing 12 megapixel camera and this is being recorded in 2K at 30 FPS, okay? With no external microphone hooked up. Now I know I said I would record this in 4K but the S8 Active actually has a 2K option. So I figured why not just make it even. The front max is out at 2K. And why not make the rear 2K as well. And I'm only going to be able to, rent, to render and upload in 2K. So I figured why not just set, settle for 2K. Alright. So this right here is being recorded in 2K at 30 FPS. With no external microphone hooked up. And then the front facing clip to close out is also going to be in 2k all right so let's get into the final set of testing here and see how it does now it is a beautiful day out here a nice 77 to 81 degrees we got a little bit of breeze and let's see how the microphones perform and how the cameras perform so let's start off with the pans first so we're going to pan from here all the way through To right about there and back we're gonna do this three times so that was one here we go with number two all right and here we go with number three and we just lost the sun. Okay. Come on back to the center. Let's test the exposure now. So let's line up on the tree. Pan down to the ground. Alright. And now as we test the exposure, we want a nice even transition. Transition from the darker areas to the lighter areas with minimal to no exposure blowout. Alright, let's see how it does. Let's test this three times. Let me know what y'all think. So down to the ground, up to the tree. And back down to the ground. One. Down to the ground, up to the tree. And back down to the ground. Two. Down to the ground, up to the tree. And back down to the ground. Three. What do y'all think? And bringing it back to center. That looks really good. That looks really good. Alright. Now, let's do the focus test. And then let's finish up with the zoom testing. So we do have tap to focus. As well as continuous autofocus here. Now, when we shoot in 4K. Right? The... Continuous object tracking autofocus is turned off. The 
ACR is turned off as well. And I did notice that when you shoot in 1080p 60, you kind of get your focus locked when you shoot in 1080p 60. All right, so I just wanted to clarify all of that information there. But let's get into testing out the continuous autofocus first. So let's pick our three focal subjects here. Let's use the big tree right here. We're going to use, let's use the blue jetta. You know, add some color in there. And then we're going to use this black trailer over here. So these are our three focal subjects. You see trailer number one over here. Big tree in the center. And then blue jetta off to my right. Okay. And again, let's see how the continuous autofocus from the cameras do. So here we go. And we're going to go to the left. Trailer. That looks like it's in focus. Let me know. Okay. Then we're going to go to the right. Jetta. That looks like it's in focus. Let me know. And then we're going to finish up with the big tree. That looks like it's in focus too. What do you think? So that's one. We're going to do this two times. So we're going to do it one more time. So, Jetta, Trailer, Big Tree, and that's two. What do y'all think? Let me readjust my grip. Sorry for the shaky cam productions. And now we're going to retest it with the tap to focus. Here we go. So, Trailer, Tap, Locked Up. Again, almost instant. Okay? Blue Jetta. Tap, locked up, almost instant. The sun coming back out now. So now it's going to get super sunny. All right. Big tree in the middle. Tap, locked up. Okay. Almost instant. So the focusing speed seems to be super duper fast. But we're out here in what is essentially perfect lighting. So I would expect it to do nothing but the best. All right. Let's do it one more time. Blue Jetta. Tap. Locked up. That was instant right there. Okay. Trailer. Tap. Locked up. And then finally, big tree. Tap. Locked up. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. All right. Now, let's finish off with the zoom testing. So, let's go ahead. Y'all see that transformer box way in the distance over there? That's what we're going to try and zoom in on. So let's go ahead and lock the focus on it. Okay. Focus is locked. Let's go ahead and dial in the exposure. Uh, we're going to do, that's a little bit underexposed. We're going to do just right here. That's perfect. And now we're going to start zooming in. And one of the reasons why I like to test the zoom is because it tests everything. It tests the stabilization. It tests the detail. So on and so forth. And the image detail retention so let's go let's take it up to 2.5 times okay 2.5 times zoom here and man does that look good that looks real good actually all right and honestly 2 to 2.5 times zoom is what i would recommend you zoom in on how's the stabilization here now I'm trying to hold it super steady, but y'all know I got shaky hand syndrome or shaky hands. It is what it is. I'm sorry, but let's keep going. So let's go up to four times now. 4.2, 4.1, four times zoom, 4.1. Jesus, shaky hands. Four times zoom right here. So four times zoom. You can see the image got a little bit washed out. But overall, this doesn't look bad. Okay? The leaves are a little grainy if you're looking off to the left or the right. But check it out. Stabilization. A little bit of bounce. But it is what it is. Let's keep going now. Let's go up to the maximum. So eight times max zoom here. Ooh, steady him out, boss. And that's the max zoom on there. And y'all can see it got super grainy. It's extra bouncy. All right, and those colors are extra washed out. So I wouldn't recommend you use the max zoom on your cameras because again, after a certain point, we're just digitally cropping the image and that just means we're degrading the image. So again, if you're gonna zoom in, 
two times right here, I would recommend this or two point five times right here, I would recommend this. Either one of those should serve you well. And if you still need to get closer to your subject, I would recommend you physically move closer to your subject. Okay? All right, let's zoom out now. All right, so this has been the final test with the rear facing cameras on the S8 Active in 2K at 30 FPS. Let me know what y'all think. Now, let me spin it around to the front facing camera for the final time and let's close out the video. Let me give y'all my final thoughts. I'll be right back in a second for y'all. All right, y'all, and here we have it, the final clip testing out the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active and its front and rear facing camera. So this is with the front facing, I wanna say eight megapixel camera, and this is being recorded in 2K at 30 FPS. And as y'all can see, we are out here in direct sunlight today. So let me know what y'all think of this vlog style clip. And let me give y'all my final thoughts on these cameras and on this device, even though I got a little bit more testing to do on the device as a whole. But let's sum up these cameras and let me give you my closing thoughts. Now, are these cameras good? If I was going to recommend the device strictly for the cameras, would I recommend it? Well, I would have to say yes, especially at the price that you can find this device for. You're really going to enjoy these cameras and it should serve you well, even though it's an older device okay just be mindful of the resolution that you're recording in and what you're trying to do with the device and it should serve you well okay that being said can i recommend this device overall and i put my final recommendations here in the camera videos because i know a lot of people just care about the cameras so i will reiterate some of this in more detail in the full review later on but can i recommend this device on the whole Okay, given the age of the device, given the price of the device, given the performance of the device, can I recommend it? Well, I would have to say yes. Okay, yes, indeed. The overall performance of the device is still really, really good. Okay, the overall cameras on the device, as I said, are really, really good. And for the price that you can find this device for, yes, indeed, I can absolutely recommend the S8 Active here in mid. 2021 okay yes indeed and honestly i kind of i say this every time i know i kind of sound like a broken record but testing this device in its entirety it just makes me sad all over for the fact that samsung actually got rid of the active lineup Man, I love the active lineup. Y'all see, my main production devices for the channel are the active lineup. So I have every active lineup device in the series. I have the S6 active, I have the S7 active, and I have the S8 active. And for those of you who don't know, there was actually one more ruggedized device that Samsung released. And I kind of want to pick it up, even though I know it's not getting support anymore. I really want to pick it up and do some testing on it. And that device would be the Samsung Galaxy Cover X. I think that's what it's called. I really want to pick that up, man. But that is a Verizon exclusive. All right. Much like the Active Series was an AT&T exclusive until later on in its life when it did come to T-Mobile, but that was a lot later on in the life cycle of the device. But for the most part, the active lineup was exclusive to AT&T. So this device right here is actually locked to AT&T. I didn't go through the trouble of trying to find a GSM unlocked version because I have an AT&T SIM. So I figured it's okay if it's locked to AT&T, I have an AT&T SIM. Whereas my other two active Devices are globally unlocked. Well, not globally. GSM unlocked. But you know, it is what it is. So I might pick up the X cover to do some testing on, but I'm actually not sure. But in terms of the S8 Active, again, can I recommend it? Absolutely. Especially if you don't want to spend a lot of money. You still want a really nice and solidly performing device. As long as you're mindful of what you're doing with it. I can absolutely recommend this one. 
All right. Now we're going to get into some more of the quirks and some of the ups and downsides of the device in the full review. And I'm going to give y'all my overall recommendations or two in the full review. But just for you guys and gals that like the cameras and make your purchases strictly based on the cameras, there you have it. There you have my thoughts. There you have all the camera samples. And let me know what y'all think of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Active here in 2021 in terms of the cameras. How do you feel it did in terms of all of my camera testing, the photo samples, the video samples? Let me know your opinions down below. As always, keep it respectful, please, and let's get into a nice respectful conversation about the cameras on this device down below in the comments of this video. I'll meet you guys and gals down there. All right. Let's get up out of here, man. It's, it is a beautiful day out here, though. Damn, I wish I had somewhere to go. It's days like this that make me want to take a drive, but I don't want to chew up all my gas, man. Man, I also wish things were less locked down, you know. Call me some friends, go out for a nice little lunch date. Can't really do that right now. Movies are still kind of locked down. Restaurants still kind of locked down. But, man, it's, it's beautiful out here, man. Damn. Anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Have a good one, everybody. Stay safe out there. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. We are out of here. Peace.